Pastor Allison, I'm trying so hard. I keep inviting everyone I can think of to healing everyday racism events and the dialogues on race. I've been talking to all the people I know and telling them about these conversations. I got 10 people to go to the dialogue last month and I'm hoping they'll come back again. But I'm, I'm just doing everything I can think of and it just doesn't seem like enough. It sounds like you've been doing really great work. I said to this passionate member of my previous congregation. It's clear you're committed to the long-term work, and I think turning 10 people out to an event is something to be celebrated. I guess, she said, but it's such a small thing. There's so much that needs to be done, and I already feel exhausted. This whole problem of racism is so much bigger than I am, and it seems like this should be God's work, that I shouldn't have to do it all on my own. As I listened to this member, I couldn't help but be impressed by her insights. This should be God's work. I shouldn't have to do it all on my own. She's so right, and it's so true. This work of building the kingdom of God, whether it is dismantling racism or interrupting other forces of evil in the world, this work is God's work. It is God's work and it is taken up by the entire body of Christ, not just one person. The work of kingdom building doesn't fall on any one person's shoulders alone. It is the collective responsibility of the human community and the divine community of the Trinity all intertwined together. So why did this member feel so alone? Why was she so exhausted? Why did she feel like the weight of the world was on her shoulders? Maybe you feel that way or have felt that way too. In our gospel reading a couple weeks ago, Jesus gathered the 12 apostles and sent them out two by two. The word apostles literally means sent ones. And these apostles are sent as messengers of the kingdom of God. In pairs, they travel around Galilee teaching people about the kingdom and demonstrating what the kingdom is like by casting out demons and offering healing. In our gospel reading today, they return from their adventures, regathering together. The sent ones gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. They told Jesus about their successes and about their failures. They told him all that had happened, all that they had learned, and all the relationships that had been built. We don't know the details, but we do know that the work of the apostles was two things at once. It was wonderfully fruitful, and it was just a beginning. We know that it was fruitful because of the way recognition for Jesus and excitement about his ministry was growing. At this point, people recognize him everywhere, and they're flocking to him. And yet we're only into the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. The work is far from complete. The people still live in poverty. The Roman rulers still lord over them. And both literal and metaphorical sickness is still rampant. The full realization of the kingdom of God is so, so far away. So what does Jesus say to his apostles, the sent ones who are eagerly awaiting their next assignment? Come away with me. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. What an odd thing for Jesus to suggest in a world where there is so much need. Jesus invites the sent ones to rest and be still. Rest, as you know, is not something that is valued very highly in our culture. In 1992, a band called Four Non Blondes released an album titled Bigger, Better, Faster, More. Bigger, Better, Faster, More. May as well be the slogan of our culture. Bigger, better, faster, more is what is rewarded in our current market system. Success is measured by these benchmarks. The company needs to be bigger, profits need to be more. Our system incentivizes this. 
So in order to be successful, we internalize these values. It leads to a deep sense of restlessness, a sense of what Walter Brueggemann calls not enough yet. There's a fantastic book called Sabbath as Resistance. It's by Walter Brueggemann, and I'd recommend it to anyone. The first two chapters alone completely shifted the way that I think about rest. As I said, it's called Sabbath as Resistance, and in it, Brueggemann explains how the practice of Sabbath, the practice of rest, is in and of itself a way to interrupt the evil systems of our world. Rest seems like we're not doing anything, but rest actually does something. Through this culture of bigger, better, faster, more, this world embeds a deep sense of restlessness, a deep sense of not enough yetness within us. And by choosing to rest in a culture that tells us we must be productive at all times, we say no to that evil force. When we rest, we disinvest from the culture of bigger, better, faster, more. We call its bluff. We say, actually, I don't have to be those things. I am enough as I already am, and by resting, we start to see that that is true. We start to see that the constant race towards more is actually getting in the way of our fulfillment, that the constant drive to produce is actually making us feel less human, less compassionate, less able to appreciate the gifts that already surround us. When we choose to rest, our body starts to hear and feel a different message than the one the world is giving us. The programming that our culture has put into us about needing to do and be more loses some of its power. When this happens, there is space for our own deep wisdom to emerge. That programming is deprogrammed. There is space for the wisdom of the kingdom of God, the wisdom of Christ that lives deep within each of us to be heard. The kingdom of God lives both inside us and among us. The wisdom of that kingdom, the spirit of Christ, is found deep within us, and it can only be heard when we stop and rest. The work of building the kingdom among us, a community of just, loving, and interdependent relationships, is the shared work of us all. It is God's work carried out in and through the body of Christ, the entire people of God on earth. No one is expected to make it happen alone, but instead we are invited into an alternate way of living, a way that is not restless, but restful. A way of life that is deeply meaningful because we get to participate in God's saving and healing activity. We get to be part of something so much bigger than ourselves, and as a result, we accomplish so much more than we could have on our own. People of God, do not forget that the kingdom of God is not built despite the moments of rest that you take. It is built through your rest. Through rest, we interrupt unhealthy cycles. And in rest, the wisdom of the kingdom emerges. I hope you welcome your rest this day.